this documentary, we will explain the story of Hampton School founders, Captain John Jones and his son-in-law, Nathaniel Lacey. Captain John Jones was already an established and relatively elderly man when he arrived in Hampton. He bought a house here in about 1678 to spend his retirement. He lived here by the river with his granddaughter Catherine and her husband Nathaniel Lacey. At that time, it was a short walk to Hampton Grammar School, which was situated next to St Mary's Church. Before he settled in Hampton, Captain John Jones had experienced a colourful life both as an MP and a parliamentarian in the English Civil War. He was based in the parish of St Bartholomew's in London and he had many times earned the gratitude of the local community by giving money to help fund church buildings and houses for the poor within the local parish. Having heard the story of Robert Hammond and the Pigeon family, you might already have a clue about how Captain Jones became a founder of Hampton School. That's right, in two transactions of 1675 and 1684 respectively, Captain Jones purchased from the heirs of Edmund Pigeon the whole of the church rectory and the surrounding land. Captain John Jones died in 1692. In his will, Captain Jones left over £20,000 to various charities. He gave instructions to set up an endowment so that Hampton School received at least £36 per year. In fact, the lion rampant we have on our school crest is also on Captain Jones's arms. Luckily, we didn't adopt the pig. He was clearly a very wealthy and very generous man. £36 per year doesn't sound a lot, but in 1692, it doubled the school's funds and provided the financial means to fund an honest and able schoolmaster and established the school's first governing body and board of trustees. Hold on. There was a problem with Jones as well. He didn't have it officially witnessed. You can see here, it finishes mid-sentence. Well, because Jones's will was unsigned, his sister, a lady called Martha Farrion, saw an opportunity to gain financially. She challenged the will in court and said that she should get Jones's land rather than it being sold and the proceeds going to charity. Perhaps surprisingly, the court decided in her favour, that is, that the land and buildings should go to her and her relatives. Fortunately, the rest of Jones's money was distributed to the charities that he had specified in his will. It is important to mention that his grandson-in-law, Nathaniel Lacey, was a principal executor. Yes, Lacey had a house just here, along the River Thames next to St Mary's Church. So, it was Nathaniel Lacey who, over the next decade, ensured that Jones's wishes were carried out. Lacey was a member of the Grocer's Company, one of the trade associations established in the medieval period. The Grocer's Company regulated standards of spices, weights and measures to protect English trade. Lacey was actually master of the company, in charge of everything. That's right, and Lacey did such a good job that historian Bernard Garside said that there is little doubt that Lacey was mainly responsible for the attention Hampton School received. Thank you Mr Lacey.